Cyrus, we have invested so much energy and frankly, like negative energy into our fear of these foods like lectins and gluten and phytoestrogens. And no one has brought forward, like it blows my mind that no one yet has brought forward legitimate science to talk about postbiotic short chain fatty acids. I have no clue why I'm the guy who gets to write the book, but I'm really glad that I'm the guy that gets to write the book because this is the real deal. This is the real deal. There are hundreds of studies backing this up. This isn't theory. There are hundreds of studies backing up the health promoting benefits of short chain fatty acids and you get them with the consumption of fiber. And this is just one of the little perks. You could go throughout the entire body. You could talk about reversal of coronary artery disease, which is what Dean Ornish showed back in the 90s in the Lifestyle Heart Trials, which is that you could reverse coronary artery disease with a plant-based diet and meditation and exercise. Well, guess what? Guess what? I, like this is, this is no joke. Talk to me. A plant-based diet produces short chain fatty acids. Meditation actually heals the gut and makes the gut produce more short chain fatty acids. Exercise, they did a study looking at exercise and they discovered that it, it improves the gut and it helps you produce more short chain fatty acids. This combination of what is considered to be a healthy lifestyle, getting more sleep, getting more exercise, eating a nice clean plant-based diet, um, meditation or like managing your stress. We have evidence as, as detailed in my book, we have evidence that on all of those levels, it is affecting your gut microbiome. And guess what the currency is? The, the currency is the production of more short chain okay. fatty acids. That's what you get. Yeah. There's also yeah. some research that we, we've come we've become privy to in writing our book about the fact that short chain fatty acids also have direct effects on the insulin producing beta cells inside your pancreas. And they can actually regulate the amount of insulin that is secreted in response to a carbohydrate rich meal. Uh, and so just like you're saying, short chain fatty acids, they're like this, uh, this currency that can go and signal to tissues all throughout your body and improve the cellular function regardless of where they exist. This is, this is why a person, who has type two diabetes, insulin resistance, can literally take a fiber supplement with their meal and notice improvement of their blood sugar, literally by the meal. Now I'm not saying that fiber supplement is the way to go. The way to go is actually to optimize your diet across the board. But that's, it, it's proof of concept that literally all you have to do is throw that fiber in there with the meal and you will improve your blood sugar control. I, Dr. B, it seems like there's nothing short chain fatty acids can't do. So in this current environment where, um, you know, we, we have a crisis going on, you know, COVID-19, can short chain fatty acids boost immunity? So, you know, Robbie, let me just say that I'm apprehensive to sit here, particularly because I have this book coming out and to sound like, hey, there's this one silver bullet, right? I'm a little apprehensive to say that there's this one silver bullet that fixes everything. Let's be more, um, let's be practical and real that there are limitations to anything. But yes, man, yes, there are studies with short chain fatty acids and, the, and you know, um, our response to a respiratory virus. So let me start here. There was a study that came out last week, okay? And they've been asking the question, why do some people get severe COVID-19, yet others literally didn't even know they had it at all? What is it that determines the response of the body to the virus? And now, full disclosure, this is, an, this is a study that is published online. It is not yet peer-reviewed. I'm looking forward to the peer review process, but they wanted to get this information out to us as quickly as possible, and this is how they were able to do it. And in the study, the bottom line is this. When they worked backwards to identify and understand what is it 
in the patients with severe COVID-19, what they discovered was alteration and changes to the gut microbiome. It is implicating that the gut microbiome is potentially a, an important factor in determining the way that your body responds to this virus. Now, zooming in on short chain fatty acids once more. I don't have a study with short chain fatty acids and the SARS-CoV-2 virus. That doesn't exist yet. We will see where this goes in the next year. It takes time for that kind of thing. And that's not the first priority when you're fighting this virus. But we have studies with short chain fatty acids and other respiratory viruses. So just to give you an example, there was one study, again, I'm not, I, I'm not advocating for animal-based research. I'm just sharing the results of the study where they looked at mice and they were infected with influenza, a respiratory virus, and they gave them a high fiber versus a low fiber diet. They actually predicted that the mice eating high fiber would do worse. The thought process from the scientists was that fiber is anti-inflammatory. So because it's going to suppress the immune system as an anti-inflammatory, it's going to actually make you more vulnerable to this virus. And they were shocked. This is why you have to do research and you can't just have ideas. They were shocked when they discovered that the opposite was true. The mice on the high fiber diet lived longer with less severe symptoms. And objectively, when they looked at the respiratory function, the, respiratory, the lung function was way better. So they, they backwards engineered it and they said, well, what the heck is going on here? We're confused. We thought that this would be bad. And what they discovered is that when you fed the mice fiber, it, it enhanced their gut microbiome, which led to the release of short chain fatty acids. The short chain fatty acids actually went through the bloodstream to the lungs where they recruited CD8 cells which are the exact immune cells that you need to fight the virus. They got the good guys into the fight. All right, you got the right guys on the battlefield. Simultaneously, the rest of the immune system was told to chill out, cool off. So rather than having an immune system that goes nuclear and just tries to destroy everything in its path, which is how people get severe sepsis, with this virus. When the immune system is overactive, that's how you actually get sepsis. That's how you get a acute respiratory distress syndrome, which is what puts people on a ventilator. Instead of that, it was suppressed. The immune system was suppressed with the exception of the proper immune cells. In other words, the short chain fatty acid turned up the immune system in the exact spot that you need it turned up and it turned it down in the spot where you want it turned down. And that is a perfect response to a respiratory virus.